and welcome to our 2021 Black Friday Cyber Monday Teardown uh, Nordics edition. Delighted to be joined by Moon Saksung, co-founder and CEO of Panagora, as well as Jarmo Levo, e-commerce consultant at Soltec. Moon Sak Jarmo, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Thanks Great. a lot. Thanks for the yeah. invitation. Great to have you. Uh, first, I'll just thought I would ask you to introduce yourself a little bit. So if I start with you, Musak. Well, um, I've been working as a consultant uh, within the e-commerce industry since uh, 2001. So it's um, 20 years something. And uh, I've seen a little bit of, you know, good things, bad things. And uh, yeah, that was before Black Friday and Cyber Monday even started. So uh, yeah, I've been involved in some... Uh, uh, startups that passed like 100, 150 million euro in annual revenue, like more than 15 times now, I think. So, yeah, something like that. Cool. How about Jarmo? Uh, well, um, I'll be representing the uh, millennial view of that. Like, I've been working with the e commerce uh, industry as a consultant since 2017. So, roughly four years now. So, been seeing and following up how the Black Friday has been evolving during the last few years. And, uh, one of the nicest things was that I was actually living in the States back in 2013, which was an interesting view on how they treated Black Friday already back then. And back then, when it was only just one single main shopping day, a lot of people started keeping it, at, um, it as a sort of a craze that this is ridiculous, like nobody should be doing anything on this day, like at least some of my friends. But then the, some of them were queuing up and trying to find everything on discount because um, it has changed quite a bit during the last few years. It definitely has. Yeah, that's true. Did you guys, by the way, buy anything personally during this period or did you find any yeah. good offers? Yeah, sure. Sure. I usually try to place some order just to see how fast you can get the delivery. Yeah. But um, yeah, every, everyone's getting much better on fast deliveries. Like some years ago, it could take weeks. Yeah. I had that issue actually. I uh, I didn't buy anything exciting except a a uh, uh, magic magic mouse from Apple, so a computer mouse. Uh, but I was like in a dire need for a mouse. I thought that okay, they have this in stock. Great, you know, let's get it. Uh, I think I order it like at the start of Black Week, uh, and I still haven't gotten it, and it keeps getting delayed and delayed. Right. I'm not sure. Is this something you've noticed in the industry, spe specifically during? Uh, like the Black Week, that issues with deliveries or? Yeah, yeah, t yeah, totally. I mean, um, um, you know, if if the pandemic, for example, if someone gets uh, sick uh, mm. in the warehouse, it could completely like destroy uh, the whole setup. Uh, mm. So, so usually, like uh, the last two years, it has been back and forward with. Uh, capacity at the warehouse due to the pandemic and and uh, whatever regulations or non-regulation or what you know whatever measures you have to uh do uh from a management level to to make everyone feel safe and so on so it's not always about don't having the capacity but you have to be careful uh, stuff like that yeah no. it has definitely had some effect also in um uh, in finland but like really the main few clients that I've been working with uh, during this Black Friday, they were able to get all their stuff stocked up way before, like after the Suez Canal issue. And they're not working that much in the electronics industry. So they actually had most of the stuff ready. But um, what they basically had to do was still to organize their uh, warehouses to run 24-7 now during the Black Week and at least one to two weeks after it. Right. So that is definitely something that they've learned during the years that just stock up on employees whenever you're possible and like keep fulfilling the orders as much as you can because otherwise you can't make it for the Christmas because and, and that's the next point that's going to happen like first the Christmas sales and then everything happening after the Christmas. So yeah. yeah. Did you guys put any, or let's say, uh, what did you expect to, to kind of happen over the Black Friday slash Cyber Monday weekend? I, I mean, um, um, so most of our clients do cross-border e-commerce. So uh, 
most of our clients are not like having Sweden, for example, uh, where we have our headquarters as uh, the main market for growth. So Black Friday has been here and Cyber Monday has been here for quite a while now and, and in Europe as well. But if you look into one of the largest e-commerce markets in the world, like Japan, Black Friday is like on, on, on the very first, it's like second or third year. This is like a brand new thing. So, so what we try to do to compensate for the lack of interest and insane competition to get the consumers here, uh, you, you know, saying, hey, Black Friday here in Sweden is like every retailer does it, every brand does it. So how, how should you have a unique offering here? Uh, we try to identify emerging e-commerce markets around the world where Black Friday maybe is, is a more a, a new happening, a, a cool event. And and the, the lucky thing with the cross-border e-commerce to those kind of countries is that they are not so sensitive with long delivery time. So we can both reach them with something new and fresh in communication. Uh, we have uh, uh, enough time to deliver without the canceling the orders. Uh, so it's very low returns on these kind of markets. So we saw a huge growth in, in, in APAC uh, markets, uh, Korea, Japan, and, and those kind of markets where they are they're born and breed with uh, licensed brands. I mean, there could be global brands, but when you find them in a market like Korea or Japan, for example, it's not the brand it, that controls them. It's a local company that has a license that controls them and or they're like exclusive distributors and so on so these kind of local and old structure uh, uh business model has created a local price uh level that is usually much higher than in europe and us and that's the key reason why cross-border e-commerce is growing so much in apac because a lot of the young consumers they don't really uh, they don't feel so motivated to go to a department store and pay 30% higher retail price. And then when you add uh, something like Black Friday and Monday, we completely destroying the local competition. So uh, we, we in those kind of markets, it's been like the new records. While here in, in the northern part of Europe, it's been like just hard to maintain the same level as the year before. Uh, very hard, to be honest. So, but in total, it has been good. But uh, if we, we, the growth has been outside Northern Europe. Mm. The few clients that I work with, um, they actually started investing in the Black Friday probably a few years ago as well. And now during this year, they kind of ramped up a bit and their e-commerce stores have been more established lately. So what we saw during the last week was that we actually saw 100% growth over, to, over last year. Which is kind of good, but the biggest change is that now that it's Black Week and everybody knows that, <laughs> one of the most peculiar things is that it's not focused anymore on Friday. Thursday was actually the strongest day for sales in Finland for the clients. And that is interesting to see that kind of the emphasis and the meaning of Black Friday as is has grown smaller and smaller. And instead it's spread out on five different days and then Cyber Monday after that. Which of course yeah. is good for the. Uh, it's kind of better for the sites and how they perform because, like, usually when you see those news about Black Friday crashing e-commerce stores, now we can avoid that because it's it's spreading out in a like greater area of uh, days. Yeah, I think that's very uh, interesting observations, and I, I agree with that because I remember a few years ago uh, when it was very heavily focused still on Black Friday specifically. Uh, I remember trying to access several different stores and it just said that you're in queue, please wait like an hour, hour, hour and a half. And I mean, at that point, you just give up. But now, since it's so mm. spread out over the week, uh, yeah, it's probably definitely more more spread out in the sales and probably not actually as focused on that specific Friday. Yeah, definitely. And it was also kind of what we expected. Like one of the other things is that we also tried to balance out the like visitor numbers on the sites by like 
putting different campaigns out on different days. That's probably a pretty common strategy and tactic so that you don't get everybody at the same time who are interested about the same products on one single day. But uh, you have one segment of clients accessing on one day and the next one on the next day and such. Yeah. Uh, I know Musa Panagora, you work or you have very strong presence more in the uh, fashion and kind of lifestyle section. Uh, was there anything in particular, according to you, that that happened in that, let's say, uh, that department? No, I mean, like, um, if if we put them into different verticals, like fashion, beauty, interior, accessories, and so on, I, I would say, like, uh, fashion and beauty has been quite strong. But it's more due to, like, uh, the relevance in, in product and the delay of, you know, shipments and, and so on. So... But you know, like uh, basically, w- where we come from, I mean, um, you were talking about performance, Yarmo. I, I would yeah. say that um, you know, Black Friday and Summer Monday, like that kind of behavior, when you see like a Mount Everest of traffic coming, try to get mm. like the, the best deals. We have always tried to get that Mount Everest of traffic, but make them pay full price. Mm. I mean, how much skills do you need to have to sell a Samsung frame TV for 40% discount? Exactly. But anyone in the world can sell anything, you know, if you like give them the lowest price and then your business sucks. Exactly. You don't create any uh, customer engagement. You don't create any loyalty. And everything we know is that the only way to build a long term sustainable business model is is that they have a critical mass of loyal consumers that comes back over and over again. Yep, exactly. Did you actually launch any products on Black Friday specifically? Yeah, I mean, like, um, um, due to the stress that so many uh, deliveries are delayed and there's so many drops coming now, uh, mm. we, we, we were forced to do, uh, for some clients, like, brand new drops zero discount and it's, it's quite refreshing mm-hmm. to still get like full price sales uh during the time when everyone is looking for a discount so i mean um um of course it's nice to have like certain consumer behavior that only looks for price but when we try to understand the loyalty in our consumers like um is is usually not the ones that pays full price always that is the most loyal customer like mm. a small combination of someone buying sometimes full price sometimes a good campaign price sometimes actually returning but multiplied with more than five maybe transactions per year within fashion industry for example creates over years a very high probability that they will buy again so, yeah. so in the end the accumulated positive cash flow you get from that kind of customer for us is an a ranking customer so when we try to flush in something like black friday and, and sabi monday it's like how could we like communicate something to our a customers without destroying them not to ever again pay for full price mm. yep, definitely. It's like, like a huge mistake that a lot of retailers do is like they, they have their target set on, on the last year uh, during pandemic, uh, which was, was crazy because every offline retail store was closed pretty much mm-hmm. worldwide. And then they try to beat that budget this year when a lot of countries start to open up and you can do alternative shopping offline or do whatever you want, eating at restaurants or traveling and spend the money. And then they're panicking and like start communicating with the whole consumer database a customers to the worst customer that you don't even want to have as a customer and try to lock them in and mm. increasing the, the 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 power in in the offering uh, just a bit last year so i think i think uh, there are many learnings from from black friday and Sabe mondays but uh, but ba- basically the uh, i think like the mass communication what's going to happen for the coming years like you're going to do different segments and like if you're an a customer you will be in like the door will be open hey you're welcome before mm. customer. and uh do your shopping in your time as you say maybe during the first two days 
and all that yeah. doesn't even have access to that. Yeah, exactly. Like, these kind of things are like we're trying to, you know, like how could we reward a loyal customer? Um, because yeah, it's really hard to to create loyal customers these days when when everyone is flooded with cash and don't feel any stress to have positive EBITDA at all. Just want to grow their targets to create shareholder value by increased market cap. Yeah, so, yeah. So like uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, everyone is like getting there and it's a race. Uh, but so I, I don't know, like, depend who you ask for and who, what agenda we're working on. If, if we're going to increase shareholder value and we're going to take market cap, you know, we can give away the products for free and they're free shipping and free returns. Just be taking market cap, you know, um, as long as we can convert them to a loyal customer. But that one day when we're going to convert them to a loyal customer, will we be able or they just like, you know, go away. I have another one. You know, with an <laughs> even better offers today. So I think like yeah. th these kind of things is like um, um, for long term. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah, kind of what I also yeah. see, saw this year with few clients that I was working on that that were kind of also targeting, and they were like the management was thinking like, so what are we going to be doing on Black Friday? I'm like, well, you've been running discounts all year or last year. You're not going to be making any big impact on Black Friday anymore. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, and we actually saw that also with the customers and discussed with the customers, my clients as well about about the fact that in the years to come the Black Friday probably won't be as influential because of the discounts. But actually there's going to be some other things that will start shaping up the like the big campaign days whether those are going to exist in the future at all anymore. Because at least what we saw as well was that in like overall, Black Friday wasn't as effective as it used to be, even though the few few clients were able to grow their targets like 100% from what it was in the past. But that's probably also caused by other things like acquiring those loyal customers other in other times of the year. And then those clients still come back on Black Friday. You know, like, like I mean... W what we're talking about here is maybe price uh, yeah and and uh, uh, internet uh, uh, has been uh, founded uh, the, uh, the creator of changing consumer behavior is a lot of bad boys of tech you know if you take like Sean who founded Napster and suddenly you can download music for free of mm -hmm. course like, he gets more than a hundred million people to download Napster and everyone is like this is great Something that used to cost money and suddenly is free. I guess that's the fastest way. That's the craziest Black Friday, Cyber Monday attack you could do. But mm -hmm. of course, there will be uh, angry lawyers knocking on your door like, hey, you should stop that, you know. But <laughs> what's the value of that consumer behavior you created? So let's say the consumer behavior of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, that, that is a behavior. Whoever mm. found that behavior, there is something that we can capitalize on because to create another Black Friday or Cyber Monday, who's going to pay for that? Yeah. Mm. yeah. It, it, whatever the content is going to be uh, in next years of coming Black Friday and Cyber Monday, uh, I mean, the, the reason why we're talking about it now is just about trying to understand like how it's going to like uh, the evolution of this. Like the evolution of Napster was this Swedish guy launching Casa because the lawyers closed down Napster and the behavior wanted to download music for free. It wasn't mm. really like Steve Jobs entered with iTunes and iPods and became the highest valuated company in the world that made a legal version of that. And, and every big change of consumer behavior, there's always some smart person or, or company somewhere that are going to find something new and, and, and like redirect it. So the most dangerous thing that could happen is, is what Apple did to the music and movie industry for some years is that some Amazon or that company would like uh, Alibaba, Tmall, you know, whatever, my mega platform, we just take a grab mm. on this behavior and pipeline to themselves, you know, and mm. and, and, and 
in many ways, the, the most worrying thing is that like these mega companies is creating these huge ecosystems. So like, um, this looks like they're vacuum cleaning the consumer market. I mean, look at Google and Facebook. How much many percentage do they have of the digital market space in Europe and US? Mm, an increasing amount. Or yeah. maybe most of it actually. Yeah, you, if you add if you add like the small ones like Twitter and Pinterest and whatever you, there is out there, and uh, you add Apple, you add Google, you add Amazon. How many percenters of the European population do they have? Yeah, probably they like, they like majority. Like this. <laughs> and then, like, what do we counterattack with? Where does Black Friday and Cyber Monday come from? Yeah, from the States. Mm -hmm. Originally, <laughs> or well, I, I think no, neither of them came from Asia. Single State was the only one that right. came from Asia originally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what they were cooking, you know, when this guy at Alibaba is like, taking 11 of November is like two ones, looks like two single persons, <laughs> that's a single day. And if that was a counterattack or if like starting before Black Friday, Summer Monday is like, let's do it before them, you know, creating a new behavior mm. in, in a market with three times the population of the largest digital economy or the biggest, econ biggest economy is US, but biggest digital economy is China. And, you know, that was a huge counterattack. He did what, what Sean at Napster pretty much did that was that guy at Alibaba pretty much like, hey, we are before you. And we're taking the money from the wallets before you. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's only that certain amount of cash out there. And it's only like 365 days per year. And, and who's going to take all that cash? Yeah, I think something that might happen in the future is that you could have like restricted days for like, let's say that you can only buy an iPhone. Yeah. And one day each month. What's going to happen? Then everybody wants to buy it on one single day. Like <laughs> things like that, that actually restrict the behavior and guides it towards certain brands on a certain day is probably something that's going to come because then you're kind of, you're relying on something else, the scarcity to produce the demand. Uh, totally, totally. So like, I mean, like we, we see, we see, a lot of physical inventory me moving offline to online, but like, you know, how fast are we moving from uh, moving physical inventory online to actually digital inventory? What's mm. the value in physical inventory over the coming years? And uh, we, we see uh, billions and billions of revenue in in digital economy with no physical inventory just look at how how much of the revenue on apple mark uh, uh downloading apps at apple it, it is gaming yeah and 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 how how where are all the fashion brands doing their launches of their new products in games mm. how many concert tickets did travis scott sell in in what is this game uh fortnite was it like I don't remember. Was like forty million tickets or something? <laughs> Do you have any? Is there any arena in the world that has that capacity? So yeah, like, I feel like not to get obsolete and get stuck in like historic success factors instead of trying to understand what's coming next for Black Friday mm. Monday or whatever consumer behavior. But because I, I guess like. Uh, you, you know, when you, you when you like lift single stay, I think it's mm -hmm. like the big question is why did they put it before Black Friday? Mm. And and what has happened with China as an economy? Yeah, it's, true. They, they they retail revenue online is three times bigger than US. Mm. Yeah, it's grown quite a bit. Bit, and they probably grabbed some Western like customers as well and and, and look at time. look at look at us in europe you know we try to build a legal uh, walls uh, the new berlin wall with gdpr general data protection and we think that's the best move we can do playing chess with the american and asian economy as a counterattack. hello mm, yeah <laughs> and do we really see that it stops them? It's like parking wrong with your car and, and pay a small fee. They're like, yeah, we take that. Yeah.
But I think that's an interesting actually leading into another topic as well that kind of when we go forward from here, we first had the singles day, huge discounts, then comes Black Friday, but then now we have Christmas is just around the corner. Yeah. And how do you kind of see that tying into everything? No, but like um, um, first, um, everyone is trying to understand when is the last day of shopping so you can get your uh, delivery before Christmas, and that's yeah, uh, because then starts the after Christmas sale as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, like it's it's really hard to put everyone in one basket because mm. you you have like the highest valuated companies are usually valuated if they become like a marketplace, like a platform. Mm. If it's uh, uh, it doesn't have to be like commodity products like Amazon. It could be like lifestyle, for example. Look at far fashion zone. They're like they are platforms for fashion, but under that you have retailers usually that has like Salando and so on. Like they're much they're really big in revenue, but under that you have the brands. And if we like put marketplaces in one corner, retailers in a second corner, and brands in a third corner. It will be more, more easy to understand and, and answer your question because the trend at brands is pretty much they refuse Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Mm. They will not have a discount at all. Mm. And also, they are in a situation, many of them, where they are, uh, have a relationship with the marketplaces and retailers where if they discount too much, they're cutting the legs of their biggest customers. So the, the transformation offline to online is one thing, and there's a transformation that back in the days, the first 10, 15 years of e-commerce is only being marketplaces and retailers that had big, big revenue. But now Nike, for example, is the largest fashion brand by value in the world. Thanks to Corona, because closing down their wholesale clients could make Nike take back the sales and sell direct to consumer. In, within two years, they've grown insane. And these kind of brands uh, uh, in, in creates huge uh, inspiration to all the startup brands around the world. Like, we're going to do the same. And uh, someone taking the leadership, and suddenly a lot of brands is like, we're going to be transparent, we're going to be greenwashing our brand, we are part of the Green Deal, uh, you should, like, don't buy too much. Uh, it's not good for the environment. Uh, uh, Black Friday, bye-bye. Uh, mm. yeah, like, and, yeah. And probably, like, when we, when we look at Christmas, like, at, at least what we saw from the trend of the uh, product data, like, one of the things that people bought was not, like, the things they needed immediately now but what we actually saw was that people were purchasing a pre, pre like ordering christmas gifts already at this time of the year and we've actually seen that happen since september but what you mentioned about the brands is that i i think that even the christmas it's going to come down to the value how does it feel to get something as a christmas present and where was it bought like did you actually mm -hmm. get it from the brand in a branded box or is it in an amazon box yeah. Which kind of makes it look like, ah, oh, okay, so you just bought it from Amazon so you can get it on time <laughs> instead of like actually putting some time and effort to it and getting it pre like ordered way before the time so you actually had the chance to that, get that, it. That's a super good point because, <laughs> you know, maybe we should start a company that only gift wraps because like, you know, when yeah. we do commerce, <laughs> every look like the brown like shit package and mm -hmm. then the second generation is like having really glossy boxes and so on. But that really doesn't match the env environmental friendly, you know, value chain. Uh, no, no. Greta is coming and is like, no, 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 that's not good. <laughs> so we go back to where we started, having really ugly brown uh, boxes, you know. Mm -hmm. And who want to who wanna have that as a gift box? But yeah, the exactly. These brands can't not really do it too glossy because it would destroy their position as an environmental friendly company. True. I know, Yaromo, you, you work with uh, various different companies uh, as your role as a consultant. Uh, have you seen any differences in the kind of in preparations for this kind of uh, periods? For the Black Friday? Well, um, what I saw, at least from the provider point of view, which we are as Soltech and my previous employer as well, was that we like a few years ago, we started planning way ahead for the for that rush of customers on the site. 
and uh, kind of getting the servers ready, putting on some load testing, planning the campaign strategies better and like what we're going to be doing at each day so that we get enough people on board and we understand who we want to attract at which point. So, so those were the things, but now those seem to be pretty standard procedures already. Mm. So now what, what I'm seeing more is that the companies are actually considering about what is the price point they want to offer because they still want to keep back Black Friday somewhat like special, mm. at least for this year. Mm. And to keep it special, they need to have something else with some different price or some different products available that they would regularly offer. Like I've seen few brands that they come up with special Black Friday products specifically that you can only get on that day, Yeah, which is a nice trend in my opinion. But the other yeah. one is harder that when you're doing campaigning throughout the year, how are you going to actually make sure that you never campaign a product with a better price than on Black Friday <laughs> so that you actually create that anticipation that somebody would need to wait for that. And uh, something that I've been thinking myself that the campaign for next year, if we're still going to be planning on Black Friday, is that we wouldn't be campaigning on single products anymore as much, but we'd actually start doing like product packages or group grouping products together or creating assemblies so that people can actually configure certain product types on a certain day. Right. That would then make more value out of that because like getting one product that you need at a special price that's probably something that Amazon and everybody else can do because they they can do that, but they don't have the same knowledge as a brand that knows that how you can combine certain products from your brand, how you can mix and match them better together. Mm. Mm. Yeah, very and interesting. Like, uh, and I mean, um, if as long as you have like a European Union based company, uh, there are certain like uh, free trade agreements between uh countries so I, I mean everything to korea under 150 us dollars is without vat and uh, uh, uh taxes so it's like mm. in union market under that the threshold so yep. we we want to do i mean may, maybe from a global perspective like if you can map like the free trade agreements then you would understand why you have a certain average order value to certain countries because mm. consumer behavior in Korea they rather prefer to pay, pay multiple orders below $150 instead of bundle ah. them to a big one. So like that that's True. like that yeah. Or or we make like the company pay for the import tax and VAT. But mm. we tried it but it wasn't successful for example the Korean market. But otherwise I, I like what the thing that you mentioned I think like it's just about getting into the segmentation of and detail out like uh, the new possibilities of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. True. Uh, but it's one thing to have these ideas. And on the other side, on the customer side, they have to believe in these ideas and, and want to execute on it. And I, I, I think that's it's a, it's a big challenge uh, the bigger company gets. Uh, so, yeah, a lot it of is. ideas out there. It is a lot of the companies just want to take the easy route that, okay, let's just offer this because it's, it's way faster, leads le less like planning, being less innovative or creative. And, and something that I'm looking forward to as well is that companies would actually invest into those digital products that you just mentioned, because I think that's a really strong point of creating something special for the clients that actually create the brand value that people then perceive, perceive like the, can I also notice outside of the uh, outside of the digital world right right so so who, kno who knows what's what's coming up i mean like uh, we we even have a hard time to identify who is a customer you know because like a customer can create multiple accounts and uh, of different mm. reasons because they want to maximize the chance to win a product or you know mm. whatever it is so this this whole thing that is coming around the corner with um, the crypto technology with NFT that you could maybe like not only on the product level confirm that this is an original product you can track the whole uh, the ownership chain but also maybe you could NFT other things in the value chain like you know who are you uh, 
uh, are you the real customer mm -hmm. and, and all, all these things that's co coming up now and, and try to understand like which which tech stack and 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 the industry is like is gonna connect what and and um um with increased bandwidth i mean like we're coming with 5d right now um and we we in europe are really slow with 5d so we see countries that has rolled out 5d years ago already talking about 6d mm -hmm. and while they're mm -hmm. talking about 6 d they're like years ahead about what's the new services that are coming up while we are here talking about legacy stuff you know we we pretty much talking here about 4g stuff uh, and what we can do with that but everyone knows that the speed of internet is the key performance indicator for changing more behavior because we can do more bonkers stuff and and diff crazy productions uh, uh i mean uh, like um, uh, when it comes to to, to user experience now uh, so I don't know what like how can you produce a new Black Friday if you had five or six D like what kind of content can you communicate and what kind of user experience what kind of consequences would it give compared mm. to what you had e-commerce 20 years ago and talk about 3d like yeah what, exactly what what has changed in the very what's the foundational changes in consumer behavior when it comes to speed because Jarm, i completely agree that every single millisecond is important for conversion mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. creates the very foundation of us even talking about that and that's like the internet infrastructure and and uh yeah it is, and it's actually probably a nice point of view to look at because now a lot of the static frameworks that basically go back to the 90s of implementing e-commerce sites in HTML like Gatsby and Next.js have, have like becoming the new standard because like the speed is emphasized so much and Google and like the algorithms are emphasizing speed as well. But what about the special campaign days like Black Friday? Could you actually right. have a bigger site that's more complex that's actually trying to produce you something different and unique yeah and when you have the fast internet you don't actually need to worry as much about the seo because it's one single day where you could basically yeah. like innovate again and like uh, try and be creative on these things yeah yeah to uh, totally um no, I, I yeah. Think, yeah, yeah, it, it's one thing to talk about the past and what we expect, but like the, the really interesting thing right now is like it, it, things are going to happen, change fast. Uh, but it's really hard to understand like um, um, the next wave of, of things. But um, yeah, let's, I mean, the financial uh, temperature out there is quite hot right now, you know, the mm. flood, money is flooding and uh, lending cash is not so expensive. But what happens when it's not that cheap to lend money anymore? Mm. Will that day come? And how will mm -hmm. that affect consumer behavior? Will it and in do something again or? I think in the, in the end, of course, every, every consumer expects to actually get their products in their hands as well eventually. Uh, and I just I read some articles that there's been a lot of issues with delivery, specific, uh, specifically this year. Uh, is this something you've noticed as well in your various fields? Oh, yes. I mean, um, uh, I guess it started, you know, with uh, uh, the Chinese production getting uh, delayed. I think it was like five weeks. But five weeks destroyed the whole supply chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you could see the increased price of logistics from uh, Asia to Europe and US and uh, the container price is going up from two thousand dollars to today. I don't know, eighteen thousand dollars is mm. insane. And between that, of course, the Suez Channel disaster just amplified mm. the problem that we have. So, like uh, seeing uh, uh, this kind of, like, for example, Japan was about to have the Olympics. So, of course. Every brand that makes money on the Olympic, which is a lot, they had to cancel whatever they produced. But it was too late, I guess. So there were warehouses around the world with products 
for global brands ready to be sold at Japan Olympics, but there were no Olympics. Mm. So we're talking about complete uh, failure in supply chain, but we also had to add all the existing products in existing warehouses couldn't deliver to the biggest event on this planet. If you combine those two events, for example, and all other events, of course, small concerts and so on. Mm. Yeah, that was the biggest fuck up ever. Mm. I mean, you could literally not go inside a warehouse without being afraid getting products over your head. No. <laughs> you had to build a new warehouse everywhere uh, just to take care of the products coming in because suddenly when they come there with the boat, well, the product from that warehouse wasn't always delivered because a lot of the retail stores were closed. So the e-commerce warehouses in the end, they couldn't even get the right product or get the product or to get the product in time. You know, everything was like uh, fucked up. Mm. Yeah, especially w w from the global brands perspective, because there is in such uh, a big part of this va value chain. That was pretty much what happened, you know, um, for many of our clients. Yeah, there's been, like we've seen our share of that as, as well. And probably one of the most peculiar things have been that we've seen some lifestyle brands that sell like motorbikes, boats and such. That those have actually started having issues also due to the components. Because it's like people now that they don't travel, they invest locally on things they can do as a hobby in their own cities and like without the need to actually travel and that's been one of one of the things peculiar about this whole thing that now that people need to stay static at home near where they live their like consumer behavior has changed based on what type of products they're purchasing and that's also probably something that the supply chain hasn't been able to accommodate too fast enough because all of a sudden you have people asking for stand-up battle ports that never were even known about the whole sport <laughs> and because of that now all of a sudden certain products like the need for those has ramped up quite significantly on a local level in finland i think we managed okay because well we're kind of logistically challenged as is because finland is so spread out and there's so little amount of people and big cities in that sense so it hasn't changed so much here on a local level but like on all the products that we rely on globally of course we've seen our share interesting the last point i i still want to touch upon is a little bit about let's say going forward in general obviously we've seen the last two years a huge spike in e-commerce traffic since covid covid started uh, but I read earlier this morning, now I'm not sure if this source is reliable or not, but it said that, that this was actually a, a uh, slow in, or the Black Friday was actually slowing down. And this was a, a clear sign in trends that the shift is actually starting to go back more towards uh, brick and mortar stores. And I'm just curious to hear, hear what you guys think. Is that something we can expect that more people are, are gravitating more, more back towards the the old and old physical stores but, but you know like uh, uh so so this is a hot topic of course for the real estate owners hmm. but basically in sweden i don't think since 2019 there's have been increase of retail square meters and that's before the pandemic hmm. so the 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 only increase of square meters in sweden is uh, first it was all the restaurants. They were taking more and more space in in, in, uh, in AAA locations to department stores. And then you could also see that the hotels was another vertical taking a lot of new square meters. So, uh, and then uh, there you have entertainment, like the social stuff, uh, like cinemas and so on, were taking a huge growth uh, before the pandemic. And uh, so in, in total, the retail space has been decreasing and all big constructions, uh, not all, but a lot of them has been canceled because already before the pandemic, uh, you can see that in a vertical, like if you have food or fashion or whatever, uh, when 
a transformation of the revenue is more than 12 percent online you start to see the bankruptcy of the offline retail stores so if there would be like a short-term effect that people will start buying more offline that will be pretty much a very short short-term effect because over the last 20 years uh, we have a global transformation of up to 20 percent of the total retail revenue in sweden we have grown 40 percent during the pandemic to 14 percent so we way below the global average so there is no chance that the offline retail suddenly we come back and let let everyone go offline retail shopping <laughs> and forget about what has happened the last 20 years and and uh, you you see that um, uh, there are so many in uh, H&M is downscaling the amount of retail stores they have Nike is downscaling the amount of retail stores they have everyone is centralizing e-com to centralized warehouses they want to increase efficiency they want to have a unit economy of scale where you get rewarded by better p l the higher the volume of orders you get which is impossible by increasing amount of small warehouses with every single a retail store and local staff versus centralizing so no i'd absolutely not believe uh, that that will be that is just a real estate pr company trying to push <clears throat> some kind of positive news and say hey we are still relevant mm. uh, and offline retail we're on the comeback <laughs> but uh, i i think like their whole we will see a complete change of the inventory of the rental spaces i completely believe it will be the e-commerce companies actually be the one that rents the physical retail space, not because only to make revenue, just because they're sick and tired of paying Google and Facebook for customer acquisition and start building brand awareness for real instead. So mm. it's just like, you know, everything that we're talking about is just the evolution of, of, of experience. And this whole dialogue with offline and online is completely idiotic anyway you know it is i don't wake up in the morning like i'm an offline shopper and tomorrow i'm an online shopper it's like <laughs> yes a it's just a human being that depending if they have time or not or energy or not or whatever mm. it is the circumstances like create certain behavior so mm. i in the end only thing that we are talking about is consumer behavior and trying to understand local and global uh, uh, behavior and understand what drives change in that behavior yeah i need to completely agree with that that at least i i haven't seen it in a in a way that people would be fluctuating away from online and back to offline especially still as the pandemic is still ongoing out everywhere but mm. but what might happen and well one thing that Schaefer has been happening and that our clients are also increasingly aware of and more interested in is like how can you fulfill from the stores, like having small warehouses instead of having big centralized warehouses where the logistics at the end is not not effective. Because people still like I what I think is that you don't necessarily need to be shipping, like offering same day shipping or one day shipping. You need to be able to offer one day or same day pickup. That that's probably what people are expecting in the future anyhow. That me here, like leaving the office, if I need to buy something now, I don't necessarily want it to be brought home or delivered anywhere, but I could actually just go and pick it up on the way home because that's what I'm going to be doing anyways. And what I'm looking forward to is that we could probably see like events like Black Friday, if they still exist in the future, that certain type of special campaign and pop-up stores might start becoming more uh, constant thing that hey we have black friday here we're gonna open up a store over here because now that some brands are moving away from the rental space you actually have a lot of empty rental space where you can innovate new things and like try and create that traction with the clients through that now we're talking that's exactly <laughs> what that's what exactly what happening you know if you have vacancy in retail square meters the real estate uh, value is going down yep and then a lot more brands are able to afford to also use those spaces because i think what has been exactly with the with the like cheap money has been that the retail prices have been going up because everybody's been building 
new stuff and now all of a sudden there's like there's too much space so the price can't be going up all the time anymore because the like the turnover and the profit on products hasn't changed anywhere like it so, still costs so, about the same <laughs> yeah no, but so, so so basically what, what when we were a kid and when we grew up and we would do shopping uh, in these stores imagine these companies are they going to the private equity companies like hey we're gonna grow to like a zillion billion dollars and uh invest in us we're the next unicorn they mm. work with the pnl they need to have profit when they grow exactly but then but we are working with the other group of clients like hey i've never been working within retail all my life i'm 21 years old but i'm gonna become the next unicorn i got zillions of dollars so let's go baby yeah <laughs> i lose the insane amount of money so the more i lose the faster i grow so it's super good and that's what the traditional retail is competing with that's why they're so angry mm -hmm. because someone has insane amount of cash and someone is just trying to survive and that that's offline versus online and guess yeah. what people with cash is gonna win mm -hmm. yeah that's how it's gonna go the one who who's able to get those like consumers interested and companies as well it's the same in b2b in a sense as well that of course there it's more about how well your company has been doing in the past and what you're going to be doing in the future and if you actually saved up your money properly so so i just want to add you, you, rasmus you had a question about the christmas sales and don't forget the christmas calendar like if you want to lift a certain skill is that the people who has made christmas display like these beautiful displays when we were a kid we were looking at them we were like oh, mm. shit, you know it's insane and we can stand there for like an hour just watching and dreaming away and like i want to have that product if you could have that kind of content production skills in a digital space create insanely uh, uh, inspiring christmas calendar where you have one uh, communication per day mm. uh, i'm sure you could like add that kind of uh, capacity experience and know-how into Black Friday or Black Week or whatever you want to call it, and maybe convert the whole thing to a much more uh, profitable uh, uh, shopping uh, event than it is right now. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. the Christmas calendar founder is just going to be a little bit sad because I don't know if you have <laughs> one and two months in a row like that, but let's see but I, I completely believe that the christmas calendar effect is still very very strong and uh, it is a part of the shopping behavior and every commerce player and retailer out there is like well today's you know offering or whatever it is but like try to mix those people has a good understanding what creates dreams and those one who's really interested in sales and like if you look at e-commerce stores today there are not so many beautiful stores out there Amazon look like shit if you ask me. Uh, it does, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's super effective. But you know, like so so e-commerce is very young still, you know, and, and mm. um, retail is hundreds and hundreds of years. And and uh, I guess like we don't want to kill each other. We want to find a way forward mm. together. But it's it's sometimes hard to get old school and new school people in the same room and hug each other and say, how could we move forward? Uh, it, that is it, true right it is like mm -hmm. uh, at the end like considering black friday or campaigning in any way it's about price versus experience and what people remember is the experience so that's that's how you will go in the future i think like as well of course if you can combine a good price and a good experience you, it's going to be a winning winning combination with quality of course but still that's that's something that's going to happen in the future that I think that the ones who play purely with price will be forgotten at some point anyhow. Mm. Very good points. And uh, I'm afraid we're running out of time, but uh, I'll thank you both very, very much for your time. I think this was very uh, inspiring and uh, very helpful. And I, I uh, really enjoyed this session. So thank you both very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you.